This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top questions and the things you struggle with most so you can have more energy, less decision fatigue about what to eat, how to move, and you can change your thoughts to Flip 50 with the life and the energy you love in this second half. And today, my guest is Dr. Deb Butler. So this should not be hard for you, all right? Deb and Deborah, you got it? <laughs> uh, utilizes a blend of brain science, nutrition, physiology, life coaching, and life lessons, teaching real weight loss, lasting weight loss, starts from the inside out, inside your brain. At 50 years old, and you would not believe that, by the way, if you saw her picture when she started her last latest round of dieting at Weight Watchers, so she could lose the same 30 pounds for the 100th time, she had one big new problem. The weight wasn't coming off like it used to. She was depressed and not sleeping. Her doctor said, welcome to menopause, and she knew there had to be a better way. And she is today going to share it with us on Flipping 50. Deb, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have such a unique background. And first of all, let's just tell everybody that I have envy because right now she is staring at the Caribbean. You are where in the world? I am in Belize. Yes. Okay. And I am drooling. Yeah. Um, I know I'm in Boulder, also beautiful. Yes. However, I'm inside my house right now with my coat on. So yes. Just saying. No coats here. No coats allowed yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. So super cool life I'm loving for you. But talk a little bit about you are a coach now, but you've got certainly a much more in-depth background in the whole mind, the body and the soul. Yeah. Um, and I used to be, and I guess I still am. I was a chiropractor and owned my own practice with my husband for 30 years and, um, worked a lot with the body and did a lot of talking, um, but really was focused much more on the physiology health of the body and the whole idea that in chiropractic and adjusting the spine, that health two comes from the inside out and that when you have a balanced spine, it's a wonderful way of having <clears throat> overall balanced health. So that's the way that I started. And one of the things that I noticed when, especially when I was talking about nutrition and when I was doing physical exams on women, one of the things that came up time and time again, every time I did a physical exam on a woman was, yeah, I'd be a lot better if I could just lose 10 pounds. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. has 10 pounds to lose. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. You have at least 10 pounds to lose. <laughs> There's no woman, I think, that I ever examined that didn't say something about their weight. Yeah. Yeah. I totally can concur with that. And it's, it's funny, it's simplistic, and yet so very true. So very true. And as I'm listening to all of this, I too can relate to them because I still thought I had to lose weight and I was a lifetime Weight Watcher member for most of this time period and felt that I could control my weight through counting points. Mm, yeah. Counting points, counting calories. Uh, counting steps. We love to count. We don't love, we? <laughs> oh, and we love to depend on something outside of ourselves to tell us what's right for us as if we don't know. Wow. Huge point right there. We could probably end the show. That's it. Right now. We're done. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, yeah, it was good. Talk. I'm going to come over now for a little margarita on the back porch. Oh, please. It's beautiful. <laughs> and I don't even drink, but I would come over. Um, okay. So let's, let's dive into this because now you really are working with women and working on self-care. And this is, um, for a lot of women, it's a black hole. Yes. Yes. So talk a little bit about that. I mean, if you're a woman who's listening right now and you've had a hard time with self-care, you know, raise your hand right now, not both of them, especially <laughs> if you're driving, but, you know, raise one hand. And if you have a dumbbell in your hand, cause you're lifting, <laughs> yes, we hope. proud of you. Don't, don't lift it up. Okay. But, um, why is it we have such a hard time with self-care first? I'm going to ask that 
tough question. And why do you say menopause is such a good time to learn it? Well, I think the reason that we have so much trouble with taking care of ourselves, self-care, is because I think that as a culture, we've been taught not to do that, that that's selfish and that we should be good girls and we should take care of others and we should be compassionate towards others and ourselves don't matter as long as we're reaching outside of ourselves and taking care of other people. There's a thread here. <laughs> so there again is that reaching outside of ourselves yes. for, for counting, evaluating, and for, you know, giving something like our energy and our service and love to someone else. Yes. Yes. And I just, you know, Deborah, I don't know what you think, but it's like, it doesn't seem that we're even taught this, like this needs to be something that's you know, like in childhood and as we become adolescents, wouldn't it be wonderful if this was taught to us? Wouldn't it? Yes. And you know, one of the things I've said in You Still Got It, Girl. I love book, that. We, we have the sex talk with our parents, but we never sit down and have the stress talk. Oh, so true. So, I mean, if I knew... And, and let's just face it, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but we're having stress a lot more often than we're having sex, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, unfortunately, that might be true from the conversations that I've had. <laughs> yeah. And we'd like to change that way, today. By the way, an R-rated show. Did I mention that? Get the children out yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd like to change that today, right, Deborah? <laughs> yes, right. I mean, if we're not flipping 50 and having more sex, there's a problem. That's Right. It's exactly right. There's more freedom. Absolutely. We should be having more fun. Yeah. Absolutely. And is it okay? Why, why is, oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. I was thinking, is it okay for us to have fun? Ah, uh, yeah. Wow. There's that. Could we be getting in our own way? Could we? That's a very good mm. question because you know what? I think that it, it seems like if you ask anybody, how are you? The first thing that they yeah. say is busy. <laughs> yeah, I so agree. Yep. As if that's the stamp of approval. <laughs> the status. Status. Yes. The busier. You're okay. If you're that, you're covered. You have a get out of jail card. Yeah. Yeah. It's really. And you're worthy. And you're, you're worthy. You're worthy. And if you're really busy and really stressed, then you're really living the life. <laughs> the American yeah. way. Yeah, right. Yeah. And just so that we're clear on this, everybody, we have been spoofing you for the last, oh. you know, 120 seconds. So this is totally not down the right path. But this is definitely a conversation that we we hear we yes. probably are guilty of participating in. I could put my hand up. I've been there. Yeah, me too. And it's like, how many people like when you say, how are you? And they say, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm really having fun. I'm going to have to say that in 2017, I haven't heard that one yet. Oh, we're going to, we got to change that today on this podcast. Okay. So Deb, how are you? I am having fun. Well, so you're at the beach. <laughs> I am. Yeah. You know what though? You could, I, 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 I could live here and not have fun. And can I point something out? Please. That's what we do, listeners. It's working for her, but it won't work for me. Exactly, because she's living on the beach. Right. Right. Yeah. But I could take my mind anywhere with me. And if my mind believes that being busy and not having fun is the way to go, I would bring my mind to Belize and that's what I would do. <laughs> wow. Wow. So that, that life in Hawaii, I'm dreaming a bit about, right? You better fix Might your be mind first right before here. you go. Yeah, like fix your <laughs> yeah. mind first and then go to Hawaii. So true. So um, true. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, deep stuff. Deep. Why, why is now? Why is menopause? Maybe, maybe not now for everybody, but perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause even. Let's be inclusive. 
why is it such a good time to learn this self-care thing? Well, I think by the time most of us hit 50, we know for sure what is not working anymore. And it's like a wake-up call. At least it was for me, especially with this whole diet mentality. It's like, I don't think I can do another 30 years of this kind of stuff. I just don't think I can do it. And once you get that uncomfortable and you start looking for options, there are so many out there that you never considered because I just thought dieting was the key to being thin. I never once realized that asking myself, am I hungry, (laughs) was an option. (laughs) Like, what a concept. It is, it is, and I I am uh, pausing here, not because I'm not without, or or without response, but I'm actually really kind of engaging and thinking, and it's funny that you mentioned dieting is the key, and I want to kind of go back to you know, potentially, do you believe that's true? Or do you think dieting is a thing that's safe? And it's another thing about we're busy Mm. doing the dieting. Mm. So we can avoid maybe doing the real work. Ooh, Deborah, deep stuff. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of my clients that say to me, if I don't concern myself with diets anymore, what am I going to do? Oh, gosh. <laughs> but, you know, it comes up because it takes so much brain and mental activity to worry about that all the time and to be worrying about your body. To think that so many, probably of the people that are listening to this right now, have spent so much time worried about that. It's like, can you think of a better time to stop it? Yeah. And yet, you know, our, I call habit gravity, right? When we default to those things and in in part, we do it because it's comfortable because it's what we know, it's what we've always done, even though, right. The very thing I just said, it's not all that comfortable. Yes. Yes. But it works, right. It was working. Yeah. In a dysfunctional way. In a very dysfunctional way. Crack and cocaine work. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, but it's like when I used to go to Weight Watchers all the time and I had my Weight Watcher card, I always felt like I had something in my back pocket that I could always depend on to make sure that I could stay thin as if I didn't realize that if I had me in my back pocket that I would always be connected and I could always take care of my own body. It was like, seriously, like when I threw my Weight Watcher card away was one of the scariest moments in my life. Wow. Because it was kind like of an old friend. I mean, it was like that was what I could depend on. And it, it, like I said to you before, it's like when I let that go, that was the moment that I knew that I could trust myself and my own body. Not just with staying thin, but with staying healthy, with being able to take care of myself, to know what my needs really are, and to be able to honor those without question, and to know that me doing that was not only the best thing that I could do for me, but for everybody whom I loved. It was the best thing for them, too. Yeah, such a great point. As I think we, we fool ourselves, mm. if you will, into thinking that giving, giving, giving and running around and wearing ourselves out for other people is the best use of us and our, our gifts and our love. Yeah. Yes. While taking care of ourselves doesn't come very high on that list. Unfortunately, that's the case. And most of us are getting exhausted from that and just thinking that it's our life when in re- when in reality it's just the way that we've been thinking for so long and believing 
that's exhausting us. That we think that approval outside of ourselves is what's going to fill us up. You know, saying yes Let's, when we mean no. Yeah. And okay, so let's do this. And I know that this is a part of what you do and, and the way you, you coach, but you began that sentence and you've begun several of them. I'm tracking, by the oh, way. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, count, I'm counting. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> yeah, we're counting. Now what are we counting? <laughs> we think. Mm. So what about that? We think, but um, do we ever wonder, could we be wrong? Do we think that the things we're thinking are questionable? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As opposed to, do we think the things that we're thinking are actual facts? Yeah. And that is such a reality check for so many when we realize that the things that we think over and over and over again become a belief system inside of us that is just made from pure sentences running around in our head from maybe what somebody else told us, what we think we should be doing. And when it feels inside of us like something's not right, that's kind of like our inner body compass trying to say, hello, hello. Are you paying yeah, attention? You've got feeling. You know, and the other thing, <clears throat> too, excuse me, losing my voice. <clears throat> excuse me, listeners. But there is a, you know, because of those random statements running around in yeah. our head, we've heard, we think should be right. Yes. There is also that, you know, if we've thought it for so long that, again, that habit gravity, we we humans like to be right. Mm. And so if we stop to admit, maybe that that's false, even though I've been thinking it, maybe it's not true just because I'm thinking it. I mean, we do have this desire to be right. And we will go to great lengths, even if it's harmful to us sometimes to make ourselves right. Mm -hmm. That's very, very true. And I always think of this, and I don't know if you agree with this, but whatever it is that we think, we will always create the evidence mm -hmm. to prove it to be true because we're always proving ourselves right. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> so agree. So agree. We talk about this a lot behind the scenes. You listeners will recognize, you know, the, the mindset of priming. You know, if you're priming your mind to believe that you know, with menopause comes weight gain or you're getting older, so weight gain is normal, <laughs> slowing down is normal because, I mean, if you're priming yourself with those kinds of mm -hmm. thoughts, it, it will be true. But if you surround yourself with other people thinking differently, you're more likely to become someone who thinks differently about that as well and thinks about the possibilities. Yeah. Oh, I'd love that. I, and Deborah, like, I just think like with your podcast and your education, it helps women change the way they've been thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, just by mm -hmm. educating them, it makes you sometimes question the things that you've been thinking because you've been believing something that's not true to begin with, but you didn't know it. Yeah. You know, it's like after, so this after is listening great. to you, after listening to Dexter, when you interviewed her, it's like yes. I said, man, I cannot wait till I'm 72. Maybe then yeah, I'll be able right. to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to tell a little story about Dexter. This is after, of course, they're not cameras. It was just audio. But after the camera stopped rolling, I looked at her and I said, all right. Darn it. I pounded my hand down on the table in front of us. And I said, I'm looking at you. And I'm like, we were going for an ocean swim. I said, did you put makeup on? Because you look really good. I don't look like that. Did you put makeup on? And she said, she looked at me just a little sheepishly, kind of just, you know, from under her eyelashes. She said, they're tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> she has she has tattooed eyeliner so that when she swims or works out or whatever, she still looks good. I love it. <laughs> I know. 
And she said, well, don't do that first. I said, well, did it hurt? I'm not sure I could do that, Uh (laughs) but I want that. And she said, well, do your eyebrows first. I said, you have your eyebrows too. (laughs) She said, like, you're my hero, woman. (laughs) I mean, seriously though, it's like we need women stepping up as we age to show people this is good. This is, you know, you, you, your body rocks, you take care of it. It'll do things for you. How you think. I mean, the way she thinks, it's like, man, I was writing things down left and right as she was talking. It's like, I'm going to take that yeah, thought. It, I'm going to take that thought. Yeah. She's so deep. Ah, yeah. Yeah. But that's really what we're talking about here. It's like, you know, what do you want to be thinking as you're growing older? What do you want to be be believing. And I think when it comes to just being connected to your body, don't you want to believe that you can trust your body to tell you when it wants to eat and when it wants to stop without having to follow some sort of external routine? Mm -hmm. Such a powerful yet simple and yet complex thing. Right? Yeah, yes, yes. And we haven't been doing it. No. We've been taught since our late teens, early 20s to ignore yes. it. Yes. Right. When your stomach is growling, you, you're you losing yes. weight. That's what Yeah, like, good told, job. Right? Good job. <laughs> know, like, wow, right? you went eight hours without eating. Good. I mean, I remember my mom, and I love her, and she's wonderful, but she was caught up in it, and she really commended me when I could go a long time without eating. Like, that's the way you'll be thin, sweetheart. Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel Mm -hmm. so sad for myself. (laughs) (laughs) But not because you've had this new awakening. So now you get it. I know. Never too late. And you know, I think once we hit menopause, we really start realizing what really works for us, what doesn't work for us. And it's so confirming when you can honor that inside of yourself. And especially when it comes to knowing that you can trust your own body. Yeah, I so agree. And I think going through this transition is a big, big eye opener opener. for, you know, have I been settling, you know, up to this point or what have I been settling for that I'm done? I'm just done with, you know, tolerating in my life. Exactly. Okay. So let's, let's dive into this. Why is, why is menopause or midlife a good time to achieve permanent weight loss? Well, I think the reason that it's so good is if you're fed up, you have to be fed up first. <laughs> and mm-hmm, I think yeah. you get to, I think in menopause, because that was no, not a pun <laughs> intended, right? <laughs> no. Okay. That was good though. I should, that was darn. I wish I was aware of what I just said. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to credit you. With I lo- this. It, yeah, that was good. That was, that, thank you for bringing that up though. So I could recognize it. Yes. But if you are fed up, <laughs> quote unquote, and you know, it's like, I just knew for myself that it doesn't have to, I mean, it does not have to be about gaining weight. It has to be about something bigger than that. And not our bodies are not meant to gain weight just because we get older. But if we don't listen to our bodies, our bodies are going to do all kinds of things. And if we spent the first half of our life disconnected, I have news for everybody that's listening. It doesn't get easier. So the sooner you connect into your body, the sooner you're going to know what it needs. And I think that if you haven't done it up until menopause, now is the decision time to do it, to connect to your body, to figure out what it needs, to figure out that if you're in pain, what do you do when you have pain? Do you wait till it's a screaming at you to do something about it? Or do you do something about it when it's whispering to you? When you're hungry, do you wait till you're starving to decide to do something about it? Or do you do something about it when it's a whisper? When you're tired, do you have to be exhausted before you decide to lie yourself down? Or can you just be ready and put yourself down? And most of us probably spent the first half 
on the other end of screaming and yelling from our bodies and ignoring it. I so agree. It's so funny. And, you know, I have this vision, um, notoriously, no, not, not isolating any of those men who are, are great and became partners in child rearing. But I mean, I'm thinking about small children and I mean, we would never wait for a child to be overtired. That's, that's like putting yourself through hell. Nobody would do that. You're right. Right. And yet we do it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves. And the, and you know, like when if I'm talking to a client, I'll say, so like you will make yourself wait to eat and put yourself off. But if it were your child, you wouldn't do it because you wouldn't be able, just like you said, Deborah, you wouldn't want to put up with it. I mean, mm -hmm. and yet why would we put up with it with ourselves, I think has to do with thinking it's the self-compassion, self-care part where it, we don't matter. Our kids matter. Our kids matter and feeling good when we're with our kids matter. But if it's just us, just be quiet. I'll get to you. Just shut up. Yeah. I'll get to you. Well, you know what? I'm going to do a little self reveal. Oh, please! Here. And it, and this was actually something that for my fitness professionals, something that I've been contemplating sharing with them, and I have yet to do it. But um, it, this is definitely an entrepreneur, maybe itis or syndrome. But I've realized that. I've become someone, and maybe I have been for a long time, but when you become an entrepreneur and, you know, I used to say tongue in cheek, my, my boss is a bitch, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, she's a slave driver uh -huh. um, <laughs> and meaning yeah. me, uh, you know, but it's not that it's that um, it's all about accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So my self worth and my judgment of myself was about how much I got done and how much I achieved. Yes. And, and so, you know, part of that ignoring your needs, whether it's, you know, the need to get up and go to the restroom or the need to, you know, get a glass of water or take a yes. break for exercise or to get to bed a little bit earlier. I found that I was doing more and more of that, cutting this corner and cutting that corner until I thought, wow, this is kind of out of hand. I'm almost addicted to ah. that. So I really had to do a check mm -hmm. recently mm -hmm. and pull, pull back and say, okay, I need to get that somewhere else. It doesn't have to come from that place of judging what I've mm -hmm. done, but it needs to be from who I Ooh. am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so how did you do that is... Well, it's a working. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, because it's so easy to go back. To, it's easier to say, "Look at what I did today. Check, check this off the list, and this and that." And and um, somebody complimented me yesterday, but I realized I must have turned a corner because they said you're so productive. You know, I, all of the things you've done, and da 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 da. And and I thought you know, I wasn't going to criticize her, but I was thinking, don't take that. Don't take that for what it's, it's uh, just, you know, I have to be careful. That's, that's not really, you know, the key to me being worthy is not about what productivity I have. Yeah. So I'm working on it all the time. I, and it's really a great thing to work on. That's for sure. And I think the reason that it's difficult is because we're not programmed. We're programmed. That's how we are programmed it's in, in mm -hmm. our culture for sure is on accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it. don't you think that getting older helps you revisit that and think about it in a different way? You know, I do. I do think too, though, for women at midlife, it may be a, an easy path to come back oh, into yeah. it because yeah. the children aren't yes. there. The, the source of pride that they were, you know, now you can't take full responsibility for it anymore. You can admire your work and sit back and love it when they come and, 
you like them as people, but you know, that, that isn't there. So it's easy to kind of, Oh, I'm going to pick up the slack here and boost my, you know, feeling about myself by diving back into Mm -hmm. this. And, you know, Mm -hmm. Deborah, when you talk about that, like what I think about, like when I think about the changes before menopause and after menopause is that, you know, feeling good inside yourself becomes more important than your accomplishments that are outside of you. Do you know what I mean by that? I do. I do. You know, I think you have to kind of walk through that path of awareness and, and spend some time alone. And I think maybe that's where midlife women can struggle. Do you experience that? Spending time alone. (laughs) I'm wondering who's listening, who gets much time by yourself when you're not actively engaged in something else. Mm, And I, I think maybe even more than that, it's making time. Yes. To be by yourself. And then what would you do? Exactly. One of the hardest questions for any of my coaching clients to answer. Me too. (laughs) Um, You know, I used to ask, you know, if you had two hours and then what if you had a three day weekend, what would you do? And and they can't answer. Mm -hmm. It's very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, revisiting the whole idea of what is, you know, playing and having fun. Mm -hmm. Like, where do we, you know, somehow we lose that. And I really think that this time of life is a great time to get it back, to revisit it. Because when you're having fun and when you're playing, there's a feeling that you feel inside of yourself that feels very different. You know, it's like being connected to something that's bigger than you. It makes you light up, you know, and I mean, working can be play and fun too. I'm not, you know, it's when you're really doing something that you love to do, it's uplifting. It feels so good. Probably, you know, exercise. I remember Dexter was saying that about like, that's her joy. That's her fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's like, we need, I mean, that play for children is moving. That is what it is. And somehow Mm -hmm. in the big, it seems like all of us at some level, we forget that moving our bodies is fun. It's play. It's release. We start looking at it as a burden or something that we have to do that we don't like to do. And I think, you know, menopause is another time to revisit that and go like, what if I did something that I enjoyed? Or how do I know that I enjoy something? You know, if I don't lose a lot of weight from it, does that mean I shouldn't enjoy it? Yeah, very true. You know, I like to start with people you know, one of the biggest mistakes they make is, you know, how much does it count? We're back to counting again, you know, in terms of how many calories does that burn per hour? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, how much does that burn compared to this? And it's like, nope, let's start with what, what you find joy in, what makes you smile when you think about it? And what do you want to keep doing for the rest of your life? And, and once I think you can start guiding in that direction, Whereas like, it doesn't matter, you know, maybe how many calories it burns, but how much joy it brings up for you. So that if you could feel for yourself, how you feel inside of yourself emotionally, when you start an exercise, and then when you're done and you could feel how you feel when you're done and you know that you feel so much better, you know it, wouldn't you want to go back and do it again? Yes, exactly. And I I think sometimes if we didn't burn enough calories, oh, that doesn't count. Or we can do something that we really hate or don't like, but if it does burn up calories, we should do it again, even if we don't want to. Yes. Yeah, you're so true. And I'm right on point there with that. And I think it's, it's why we fall off, right? So there are statistics Uh that say women are notoriously, you know, they will start programs and initiate fitness programs 80% more than men. Mm -hmm. 
However, they also drop out about 79% of the Mm -hmm. time. You know, whereas men, men don't get started nearly as much or as high percentage, but when they start, they stick. Mm. But they tend to choose things that they like to do. So fascinating. And I think that, I think Mm -hmm. that, you know, when you say like, what's another great thing about menopause, it's like, well, I don't know that that, you know, once you can start guiding women and going, well, what, if that didn't work, what might work? Like, what might you actually like to do? You know how so many people talk about dancing. Yeah, have you noticed that? That like I say, well, what would you like to do? And mm-hmm. and yep. um, there's so many people that really want to dance that aren't dancing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think about the joy that it could give those people who oh, I've always wanted to dance. You know, there's just so many things that you could be doing. What what interests you? What lights you up inside? And then your mind goes, but yeah, when would I do it? Where would I find it? And it's like if you let your body kind of lead the way, it'll lead your mind in the right direction too. Right. And vice and versa. Vice versa. Right. You educate, you can educate the mind and the mind can help. And then there's just so many things that you might be able to do that you just hadn't thought about it before. Cause for all kinds of reasons, you didn't have the time or you don't think it's going to work or whatever. And, um, there's so many things. So agree. So agree, Deb, I think we could go on and on, but I think we've hit, you know, the major points being, you know, right now is the time, not, not even it's never too late. That's not even appropriate for today, but it's like right now is the perfect time using all the data that you've got to start with self-compassion and why now is the right time. So Deb, the question that I haven't asked and I ask everyone at the end is, is there something you wish I'd have asked you? Um, well, maybe what is self-compassion? And what is it? <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I, we use the term a lot, but I think that most of us always think about compassion, about being kind to other people. And I remember talking to a 92 year old friend of mine where I said like, what do you think about self-compassion? And she looked at me and she said, well, what do you mean? She said, I know what compassion is, but what do you mean by self-compassion? You mean like being compassionate towards yourself? Like she had never heard this. And this is a wise woman. And I think the idea that we could be as kind to ourselves as we could be to the person that we love the most and we could treat ourselves like that all the time, how different our life would be and how different we would feel inside of ourselves if we were talking and being kind and being aware of what we're thinking on a regular basis and that just because we're thinking something, we could use mindfulness to help us decide if we want to believe it or not. I love that. Very eloquent. Thank you so Thank much. you. All right. So we have already in the green room, Deb and I talked about how you listeners could get more Deb. So her podcast, of course, is Thinner Peace in Menopause and Beyond. And you can find that at Dr. Deb Butler. And that's Dr. as in D-R. This will be in the show notes, drdebbutler.com forward slash podcast. And she also has generously offered something special for Flipping 50 listeners in a 30-minute consultation. You can get that by going to drdebbutler.com forward slash work with me and put Flipping 50 in your subject line when you connect. All of that, again, I will put in the show notes. So if you're driving, you're walking, or you're lifting, keep doing what you're doing. Don't try to write it down. It will be here. Deb, thanks so much for uh, a lively and fun conversation. Oh, thank you, Deborah. It was wonderful. I enjoyed every minute of it. 
Listeners, if you have a question, please submit it. Leave it below the show at flipping50.com and join us on the Flipping 50 TV Facebook page. To get all the juicy resources and links mentioned in the show notes, visit today's episode at flipping50.com forward slash podcast. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating in iTunes. It really helps. And then share this with a friend to surround yourself with a supportive community of women on the same journey. What are you waiting for? Start Flipping 50 today.